study they did, they found that on average, patients without uh, Voxogo get about four centimeters a year in height, and the patients with Voxogo got 5.5 centimeters in height. So it's an, an additional 1.5 centimeters, half an inch a year, which is about a 38% increase. Um, and the average age in that population was age eight. So if you're a little bit older when you start the drug, you may not get as much. And if you're a little bit younger than age eight, you may get a little bit more. Uh, again, right now it's approved for patients who are five years old, uh, have open growth plates, and um, have a diagnosis of achondroplasia. So there are questions on whether or not the drug is approved for other skeletal dysplasias. Uh, and I believe Baumrin's working on that. Hypochondroplasia is one of them that has the same genetic defect in FGFR3, so I'm hoping that that will get approved soon by the FDA. I'm also hoping that the age will go down to a lower age. Uh, in the EU, they have uh, starting at age two, actually. And the reason that's important is because most kids have their boys somewhere around four, girls around three is about 50% of your growth. So if we can get this drug earlier, then perhaps it'll have a more impact. Can you talk a little bit about how the drug is given, orally or a shot? or? Yes, so it's a daily subcutaneous injection. Uh, they recommend in the abdomen, the thighs, the back of the arms, or the butt. So that's like insulin is given, the same way, or heparin is given, is in the same way that anybody knows how. It's a very small needle. It doesn't hurt, but it is obviously invasive and it still is a drug. What about, did they, during the studies when they gave it, did they find complications with the drug? Yes, yeah, so the two most common side effects were, were injection site reactions, which is why they uh, recommend cycling through different areas for injection, but usually there's redness um, or a little bit of tenderness at the injection site. They said just go to a different injection site if you have that. The other one was actually uh, transient, which means not permanent drop in blood pressure. And so they recommend about, or they recommend drinking or eating something about an hour before you uh, take the injection. So what other options do people have for limb lengthening? And that's something that basically uh, people discuss is what other options are there um, if, if the family decides, you know, we want this child to be taller or they or the parents say this child should be, you know, we should do something for them. Um, well, right now, so I agree with you and I think lengthening is a very personal choice for a patient. I don't think patients have to be lengthened and I think it's good when they're able to make that decision as well and say, hey, this is something that I want to go through. Uh, right now, really, the only other option is uh, surgical lengthening, which we can do with nails inside the bones or frames on the outside of the bones, depending on their length. Right, and we've discussed that, but I mean, I think that there are charts for achondroplasia determining how tall someone will be at maturity. There's achondroplasia growth charts. And on average, achondroplasia is somewhere around four foot, depending upon which chart, where they fit. There are some, there are some shorter people with achondroplasia and some taller people with achondroplasia. And you know, is that a disability? That's a good question. I mean, that's, that's a question for a family to decide, and we don't want to get involved. And there is some controversy in this, and we, under, we respect the controversy, and certainly it's a conversation that people can have. And I think both sides need to be respected, right? I think the side that says, you know, we don't think this is a disability to be, to be a, a short stature. We think this is just the way we are. That's fine. And that's okay. Um, and if they decide that we, we do want to try to do something like the sorotide or Voxogo or lengthening, then they can try that. Uh, how do they get? How do they go about getting the drug from us or from you? How do, how do they do that? Uh, so right now, the distribution hasn't started yet. It's supposed to start either at the end of this month or beginning of next month, was the last that I heard. Um, right now, usually contact our office. We'll set you up. Patients need to sign a consent form. We'll fill out a little patient profile and a prescription. Send that to Baumarin. They take care of all the all the. Uh, behind the scenes work with the insurance company and they'll get the drug then sent to the families um, every month or every three months depending on the prescription that we give them. The drug is weight based so depending on your weight uh, that will determine the amount of dose that you get and it will change as uh, you get older. Right, because I think if people are paying out of pocket for this drug it's very pricey, is that right? I mean, I don't know what the exact price is but I've heard it's pretty expensive. Right, because I think we were looking at whether or not you started at two or five, you know, being almost, or three or five, almost like a couple hundred thousand dollars. So it's really expensive in terms of... Yeah, and it's a difference of an inch and a half between two and five. Right, because in the Europe, so, we, as, as Dr. Hoosier was saying, and what we're saying is that in Europe, 
they've approved this drug in a two-year-old. We actually would love that to happen because if, if you're going to use it, the earlier you can use it, the less chance you'll need to have extreme lengthening. And even if this just, if you decide that this, you want to be lengthened, this may mean you avoid one or two lengthenings out of the three that we usually recommend if you want to gain a certain height. So there's a conversation. Yeah. I, so I'm also hopeful too that maybe this will have some effect on the problems with the back or changes in the angles of the knees or the legs. And time will tell. We're hoping to start some study looking at these types of changes in patients' bodies on the drug um, with using x-rays and all the technologies that we have here at the Institute. Right, so we discussed that before in Friars with Feldman. Is this spinal stenosis that occurs in achondroplasia and in hypochondroplasia? And whether the spine elements, really it's called the pedicle, whether it grows longer during this is not known yet. We don't, so if that's a question, if someone said, will this prevent some of the complications, such as spinal stenosis, we don't know that answer. I certainly asked that to Biomarin um, when we met with them a couple weeks ago, um, and they don't know the answer. So I think these are really, I think these are important questions that we'll know over the years. I mean, there were no big complications in this study, which was a quite large study done yeah. at the time. That doesn't mean all drugs are safe. I mean, as we know from the controversy of taking a COVID vaccine, people, some people, don't like medications and some people are, are in favor of them. So I think that obviously we're not pushing this medication. We are just giving it as an option for people who want to be, who want their, their stature to be bigger. Yeah, and another thing I'll say is it's not a contraindication to get the medicine and be lengthened. That's a question I've gotten from a lot of patients that I've talked to already about is can I still have limb lengthening if I'm taking the medicine? And my answer is absolutely yes, so. Okay, so I think that you can you know, for instance, if you said, well, how tall is my child going to be? We can not even tell you that over if you email us. We can almost give you an, an estimate over the, if you give us the birthday and the, and the gender and sex of the child, then we will can tell you the, you know, how tall your, the child will be upon sky within a few, in, within a half an inch, how tall the child will be um, at skeletal maturity. Look, it's an option. I think that, um, so we're willing to take questions. You can email me at dfeldman at paleoinstitute.org. Dr. Hoosier, A. Hoosier, A-H-U-S-E-R, at paleyinstitute.org. Uh, um, and we can try to answer your questions or try to set you up with understanding more about this. We certainly can take questions now if there are any questions through Facebook Live, which McKaylee will look at right now. And basically, since you have no questions right now, certainly you can go on our website as well and ask us questions through the website, and we'd be happy to respond uh, to you in any way. But I think that we find this exciting just as another option. And we thought we got there. And there is one question I think Nikhil is telling me. My son has been taking this drug for several years. He was actually the first male to ever be to ever be dosed. He is now 15 and getting close to being done as his growth phase will be closing. Once finished with the with the drug, could he still do the lengthening? Right. So I think that Dr. Hoosier just said that he said that question. So the question was, you know, if you have if you have Voxogo or if you have a sort of and you still want to be lengthened, which you may need to be, because it may not reach the height that you that you that your your desired height. Then yes, the answer is yes, even on it or after you're finished. Yes, absolutely. There's no contraindication to limb lengthening. So actually, what's interesting is Dr. Feldman and I have actually lengthened a patient who was on Boxogo and then had to leave the trial so that we could lengthen him, and it went really well. Okay, great. So wishing you all a great holiday season, and we will see you in January for another conversation about something that we'll think about. If you have any holidays. suggestions, uh, let us know. Okay, guys, happy holidays. Merry Christmas.